Watch it raise it to the ER. Go to the back and grab the cleaner for me. Culture. I am your host Chris, I'm sweating Cause we did this on some last minute And I, I kinda like those last one I did like that Turned out to be awesome So I'm in good faith in this one Ty came up with these concepts Which is cool I'm glad of that um, Let me introduce Some of the biggest athletic phenoms To come through this town And this state Damn it for some respect, okay? I got my nephew here, Ty Fagan. Yes, sir. Phenomenon, two-time champion in yes, Upsley sir. High School basketball representations of the uh, Georgia Bulldogs by way of Ole Miss Rebels. And I also have here Trayvon Walker, also two-time champion in that same basketball championship. Also representing Bulldogs. Probably had one of the most outstanding seasons in college history. Okay, Trey Fon Walker, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you for having me. Bringing it in. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so let's get it. I'm like 42 with these glasses, got these big ass fronts. What's happening? Listen, man. This is interesting, the, the, the whole concept of the childhood, right? Because their childhood was spent in where? Long time. Long time. Long time. Don't nobody know what that's it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sticks. I'm talking about ain't nobody never ever heard of that place until you guys came along. How does that feel? Uh, to be able to put such an unnoticeable, small, very tiny, small place on the map like that. For me, uh, it's just crazy because like most times, like people in Thompson, because it's considered Thompson, and I say I'm from Law Town. I say that just because like. That's why I grew up, like most of my childhood, like my grandparents, you know what I'm saying? They killed me when my mama was working and stuff like that. So even when I got to college, I decided to put Law Town, Georgia is where I'm from mm -hmm. versus putting Thomas in Georgia, even though, you know what I'm saying? They don't have no disrespect, but it just gives people, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is Law Town, Georgia? You know what I'm yeah. saying? I just felt like them people, you know what I'm saying? Growing oh. up there, they deserve to be talked about, you know what oh, I mean? Because yeah, they played it. an important role. Give it some time. Soon, in our childhood. Soon people so, you know, don't know where that's what it at. was for me. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Me. Coming from Lock Time, like Ty, like he said, he put it in college. He let it be known that he was from Lock Time. For me, you know, my type of upbringing, my dad being who he is. Yeah. So if you, if I put out where I'm living at, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, yeah. You got to be coming out of <laughs> looking for something. Yeah. Know what you got going on. But that's why I think, personally, I can respect that. Growing up in Lock Time, like, it, was, it meant a lot because really it ain't too many people that come out of Lock Town, Thomaston in general, like you said, that play college sports. It didn't really mean Fagan. So. so, so, so explain that because I grew up there, and once you let left me break the, it down, right? Once you left the city, let me break it down, though, right? <laughs> For the ones that don't get it, though, like why it's important to us, if you ever go down there, brother, resources are at a low. Like we hooped on grass, like we mm -hmm. dribbled grass to dirt, like we mm -hmm. turned grass to dirt. Like, you know what I'm saying? We used to get jump no, on our bikes, no, walk, no do whatever. Shoes. You know what I'm wow. saying? Ain't no clean <laughs> shoes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> jump on our bikes or whatever. Yeah. Go up to the church and hoop. You know what I'm saying? With them boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, the resources are low. So you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like for us to still grind and work the way we did. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's why it's special to me. Because for 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 a small town. Not even a small community, like a small town is hard to get exposure. Mm -hmm. Like it really is. Like even when y'all was doing y'all thing on the basketball court, like the respect wasn't there in the metro parts of the state. Really? It just wasn't. It wasn't no respect there. So to get exposure from somewhere like that, because once you leave the city, and I'm just talking about the city of Thomas, and once you leave, if you don't have everything that you want, ain't no going back. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no going back. No girl, no girls want to come see you. They gotta like you. They come that far. <laughs> Talk about the moms, huh? Yeah. <laughs> girls gotta like you to come that far, and her parents gotta like you, like you too for to let them know that you going that far. Yeah. Like you say, even yeah. people in Thompson too though, they ain't even driving a lot of time. They, 10, that little 10, 15 minutes. Real talk. Real talk. Come out there. 
So we, we got some Southern background, and I mean some Southern Southern because we talking about a lot of times. So to me, tell me what y'all think the difference of parenting back then and now. When you say that, you mean like for us or you mean in general? Both, which is just fly with it. I'm gonna let you have it at first, bro. Mm. I'm gonna take off. Parenting now, I definitely say it changed because the generation changed in a lot. Like, I don't know, I just say the parents nowadays, I feel, me personally, I feel like they want to be the kid's best friend, get in with them good. It just, I mean, I, I can understand that, but like, that ain't the way to go for the simple fact of the way. You know what I'm saying? For you, you're an older guy. The way you was brought up, switches. You going to go get switches, pick out the switch. <laughs> pick your own switch. All that. Like, you got to go to the tree and do that. But, like, parents, nah, you just don't see the structure how it used to be as far as keeping you on track as far as sports. If you if a kid don't want to play sports, nah, they leaving it up to the kids to make their own decision. Yeah, just take them out of it. It's just a whole new generation. A lot of things changing. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm going to take it a step further, and I know you can relate. Coming from a, you know what I'm saying, an older era, an older generation, I just remember being a young kid, being adventurous. Down there, you know what I'm saying? It ain't really no polices. It ain't really, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no laws. You got a bunch of wildlife, woods, just free land and just free range to just do stuff. You know what I'm saying? And as a kid, we did stuff. And, you know, I could just remember if your parents went around, somebody else's parents would get you. And if they didn't get you, they called somebody. And by the time you got home, it wasn't no explaining yourself. Yeah. Some touching going on. So you, you know said, what I'm saying? So what you're talking about is a village. It's It take a village to raise a child. Like, it took more than just, you know what I'm saying, his mom and dad to get this product. You know what I'm saying? You know, they did a bulk of the work. Mm -hmm. It take more than just my mom and you and, you know what I'm saying, my grand. It took a lot of people for us to become who we are. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Um... Your mother was hard on you. Come on now. <laughs> huh? Come on now. Because sometimes, sometimes I was just the place to go to escape that, okay? And I know your father has a military background. He was in law enforcement for a while, so I know he was hard on you. And I ain't saying this because I know he's a military. I'm saying this because I was there. Yep. But were you... Your fr your parents' friends? Do you feel like your uh, mother was your friend? Do you feel like your parents were your friend? On. I'm going to go back to that. Let me tell a funny story real quick. Go ahead. I was in school one day. We in the gym. I don't know where he was. We was in school, though. We were still in school. And I'm in the gym. I'm uh, I'm on the hallway where the girls' locker room at. He done came. His dad, Steve, Mr. Steve, came through the back door or whatever. I ain't seen him, Chris. <laughs> I'm just talking to somebody. You know what I'm saying? I'm just rapping. You know what I'm saying? Just talking. Just talking to him. My pants were sagging a little bit. I had no belt on. <laughs> I felt somebody grab my britches off, <laughs> get them up with one hand, but he had the back of my shirt too. Oh, yeah. And he put me up on the wall, dog. Oh, yeah. He's so strong, bro. I couldn't see him. Dog. Yeah. I'm looking for him, bro. I'm like, yeah. who got me? <laughs> Until I heard him say, the next time I see you, you ain't got no belt on, there's going to be issues. I heard his voice and he clear. I said, yeah. oh. Sure. Please put me down, sir. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, to your question though, I don't think me and my nah me and my mom were best friends growing up. I was able to talk to her about anything, but no, nah, we weren't best friends. But now I can say you know what I'm saying because she instilled the morals and you know what I'm saying taught me so much. Now we can talk on a different level. I wouldn't even say we best friends now, but we are we definitely friends now. Mm -hmm. Would you say the same? Uh, I definitely say pick up all like what Ty said. I wouldn't say that we best friends for the simple fact of how hard they raised me. But as I grew older, I understood everything that they were doing for me, the position that they were trying to get put me in. But even if I was to say that they were my best friend, now nah, they probably wouldn't even like the fact that I said that. You know, <laughs> my, my mom and daddy like. I ain't your best friend. Like your mom and dad, they gonna keep it simple, straightforward. Hey, but real talk though, you you, you appreciate it, right? Most definitely. So, I'm saying to say, I remember how my mama was when I was growing up. When I got to college, bro, I was so prepared for life. I ain't going to say I was prepared for everything because I was still 18. Yeah. But it was so much I was able to do on my own. And, bro, looking around at my teammates and watching a lot of them, them guys couldn't wash clothes. <laughs> them boys couldn't drive. Them boys had a license. It was so much they couldn't do on their own, bro. Was it like that for you? Right now, I'm Like guys just folding under, like, yeah, life yeah. pressure? It was, it was definitely like that, too. 
for me is what I think I say that's anybody really like without the upbringing that we had like you said take a bit of coming from a small town people you know what I'm saying we get to different areas of different cities like people not teaching their kids to do that like you say the best friend part like parents are just they'll do it for them they ain't making them wash dishes fold clothes take yeah. the trash out even a little that's something the like that's the good side that's, yeah. that's parenting to me well yeah. definitely when you don't prepare the boy for life, for you not being around, yeah. that's parenting to me. I'm saying I'm asking that question because I'm trying to figure out where did parents go wrong with the idealism with that, right? Because um, I don't think my kids would look at me as their best friend, but they my best friend. And whether they know it or not, I'm their best friend too because my dad was hard on me. He has a military background. His, he come from a zero tolerance background, but... No matter how hard he was on me, he, he, he felt like my best friend. Like somebody you could go to. Like yeah, man. It was like even though he was he was yelling, he wouldn't. My dad never yelled at us. Even though he was chewing me out like softly with a very long monologue, I felt like he was telling me the truth. I just wish he would stop. <laughs> but I was in love with him. The attention, all that. You know, I just I don't know. I was I, he was my best friend. You know, I don't know what that is. Like, I'm just trying to figure out whether the parents go wrong in that because I'm hard on my boys, but we best friends, whether they going to admit that. Yeah, I don't know how to explain that. That's an interesting yeah. dynamic, though. Oh, yeah. It's an yeah. interesting dynamic for sure. All right, man. I know you get a lot of love for how well you play the game of football, but let's talk about basketball, man. A lot of people may not know that about you, like how long of a history of basketball that you have. First love. First love. Like you was you started out like as a point guard. Yeah, yeah they don't know Lakers. that. They don't know <laughs> that. Okay. The Lakers, my team. Bro, yeah. bro, playing point guard, dog. Yeah, and he was the biggest kid in the <laughs> league. I was like, now why is that? Is that because he was the only one that could dribble? At that time, At, I, yeah. I just had to say for the simple fact of I was just that athletic, the way I could do whatever. And for the most part, I was big around that age. Simpson League. I first started playing. I say Lakers, what? That's Want to say that's, that's the seven through ten. Like seven through ten. Seven so through I'm, ten I'm at that age. I'm probably already like, I know, ten five, four, five, five. <laughs> no cap. I'm heavy. I'm heavy no too. Cap. So I can put the ball on the floor, <laughs> do whatever it takes for real, just to go get a bucket, help my team get a win. Really. Wow. But I don't like how he said back then I was athletic enough to pretty much do anything. As if he ain't now. <laughs> As if right. he ain't now, bro. I don't know lie. I was doing my rehab at UGA. You can walk down the hallway. I don't know if it's still there now, but you can walk down the hallway. They got like his mile per hours of what he built up running. I said, well, I don't think I can beat that boy in the race no more. <laughs> you remember when we used to race as kids, bro? We used to race. Me and this man used to race. I used to beat him by a step or two, and I was 60 pounds smaller than him. Now, I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I can you get it. never been slow, so. I ain't never been slow, but <laughs> yeah. he pulling them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He pulling them. Um, like, so. What do you think that translated over into the football? How do you think playing basketball? Because you played basketball the entire time you played football. Like, AAU, if I'm not mistaken, you almost had the same amount of offers for basketball as football. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say I had the offers, but I had the interest in basketball. But as far as basketball translating, helping me within the football aspect, like, it was just something that – I couldn't take the game of basketball a lot for the simple fact of my foot. Basketball helped with the footwork, quickness, being able to move laterally side to side, and all of that just translated to me being like, the athlete that I am now. Like, like I say, in college I played deep, basically deep tackle, big end, so I'm playing on the inside of guys. So with that, I, I'm able to move anyone on the field. They not ain't just never playing played basketball like you. Yeah. They ain't never played. They ain't got the footwork like you. Some guys might have did play basketball, but they wasn't as athletic as I was. Like you say, I was dribbling They were ball, heavier. They were heavier that. guys. Yeah, bigger guys. But as far as it just helped me be able to move around a lot more on the football field. So, so would I, you? I'd like to. Would you say say? No, nah, go ahead. I'm, we still stay on football. Go okay, ahead. Though. Okay, so I, I'm saying, like, I like to, when I refer to basketball, I like to refer to it as However fast you can think in between minutes or seconds will determine how well you can play the game, right? So I always like to say I play in the milliseconds. Like, the milliseconds are, like, super fast. Like, that's how fast I'm processing. Like, yeah. Yeah. what do you think you have to process faster in basketball or football? Uh, 
I definitely say football, you have more time to think. So it's basketball. Basketball, you have to, everything, like you say, everything happening like this from a rebound, getting a shot off. I mean, basketball, for yeah. sure. So you so you would say that that definitely played. Yeah, my reaction role. time, yeah. all of that. Like, it, yeah. it helped with all of that. What you were trying to say? I mean, I just wanted to throw a jab. Like, a jab? A jab. At football? At him. Or? At him, okay. Forget football. <laughs> at him. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Most don't know. I quit like right at middle school. Like so, I quit like. He was a dog. I played. <laughs> I, play, I played all up until like my sixth grade year, and up until that point, like my last year or two playing, I kind of only played because I was more athletic than most. You know, so I was able to think better than most. You know, what I'm saying it just. I had some. I ain't gonna say. I love football, but I had some love football. But at this point, basketball was here for me now. And I was kind of growing past anything that I had football because I felt like it was taken from basketball. Because if I'm playing football, I'm at pretty football, I'm clearly not working on basketball. Right. And that bothered me. Right. But I really just want to say, at that point in time, before I quit, would you say I was better than you? A uh, better athlete, for sure. Okay. I can't even. I'll take that. Down. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> I just wanted to mess with him because I told somebody this other day. I said, bro, I was good at football. They're like, man, look at you. And I was like, what you mean, look at me? Yeah. I was like, man, y'all better. Hey, next time y'all see Trey, I said, man, ask him what I was. Man, I was a dog, bro. You were definitely Real talk. But no, nah, I wasn't better than him. I just wanted to mess with him. I probably was, huh? Nah. Well, well, I, I mean, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. You guys, have, you guys have, have extended what the local talent around here has done. Um, we just hope that we get to see it again. If not, you know, what better way than two guys like y'all to, you know? Because at some point, you know, at some point y'all going to have to let well, I ain't going to do it to him, but you had to do it. I ain't yeah. going to do it, dog. And it might slide out of the position, but that's for another day. Let's talk about championship runs, man. Oh, man. He got more than I do. <laughs> I'm just saying, ups and lead um, basketball, like, yeah, just ups and lead basketball, like, come on, man. That was special. That's that was funny. special. Like, wow. 63 complete wins. And I would say out of 63 of them, probably 50 of them with blowouts. By 25, 30. You know, this is what I want to say. What made those runs special. Now that I've been able to you know, help out this year a little bit with Coach Law and the high school guys and, you know, tap in with the younger generation and look back, you know, the biggest difference between us, it wasn't so much just talent, but it was the level of accountability yeah. that we had. Like, not only did we play together from this, it was the accountability. Like, for us to come up like this all the way to high school, love each other the way we did, but still – have to hold him accountable. He hold me accountable. You know how many times he done got at me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that way people don't see you like, hey, Ty, you, you BSing. And people think he don't talk trash, talk crazy. <laughs> this man talk crazy. I ain't going to say the stuff he say, but you know. Now, 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 but that's just the difference. Like Now, describe or elaborate more on accountability, like what you guys held for that locker room. And not just you guys, because I'm pretty sure it wasn't just you guys. Because it was a team of 12, 13 guys, 14 maybe. Man, we held the coaches accountable. Right. There were times where we had been on practice two, two and a half hours, and they ready to go. We not leaving until we get our shots up. Lot ready to go. Coach Pry ready to go. All them guys ready. You know what I'm saying? They oh, they ready to go. We getting ours though. Yeah. You know now I see. You know what I'm saying? And I be trying to push this more for them now. Practice in. Oh, we out of here. Yeah. Couldn't wait. Yeah. We went like that. That was a difference. Huh. So what you think? Like as far as like. It's what like, made that championship run and all the things that went into it made it special? Man, like, I, number one, I say the chemistry the, and the upbringing that we had. Like, mm -hmm. just to go back to say the village that helped raise us all the way from Civic Center League, the travel ball. Name dropping grade. time. That's a different Name village. Name dropping yeah. time. The Coach village Greg. that raised you as a kid and the village of coaches we yeah. had bringing you up in the, as an athlete. That's a different village. Yeah. But, yeah, family-wise, yeah. You got the coaches and then I'm not talking about the family right now. I'm talking about the coaches. You got rec league coaches from AU Ball. Even though we might not have been on the same team at that time, in the end, we still we won middle school championship. Speak on that. And mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that was basically the same team same that we team. had yeah. when, yeah. when in high school. So 
I just had to say just the chemistry that we had and the bond that we had amongst each other. Even though a lot of the guys that was on that team too was we all were family members, like real blood family members. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, we just had that chemistry and that bond where we could say really whatever we wanted to say to each other as far as holding each other accountable. Say for instance, he's slacking off. I'm gonna let it be known that he's slacking off because he know he's a great player. <laughs> to everybody, the same for me. Yeah. yeah, that's for anybody on the team. To everybody. everybody. Now, now, everybody. now, now. How much of this happened during the game? Same. Yeah, it, but I'm gonna be honest fine. though. So much between us, you know what I'm saying? As far as leaders took place at practice, most times in games. How to? It be muscle memory. Oh, energy led with what we done said at practice. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. Trey might be like, hey, let's go. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. We finna take off. Yeah. So with that too, speak on that with he talking about like on the court, like we never I wouldn't say we never really had to address a situation, but we always knew it was a time and place uh, to handle the situation to where we could handle that on the sidelines or you know what I'm saying, we might huddle up on the court and have those discussions amongst ourselves the way we not putting the people you know what I'm saying? The fans in our business, mm -hmm. let them hear what mm -hmm. we actually got to say. Like, we really saying some real deal stuff to each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, I mean, I'm glad y'all said that because um, I'm going to just segue that off into the subject of Locke, Coach Lockhart. Um, he's caught a lot of flack over the years. Mm -hmm. I think we all can agree to that. Yeah. Um, it's safe to say that we are human. We're going to disagree about things. I haven't always agreed with Coach Locke on certain situations. Mm -hmm. And I've also seen situations where I've agreed with Locke, but I've seen whereas the masses of the town don't, you know what I'm saying? And I, can, and I can understand the back and forth and the in-between, but that does speak volumes because I used to say the same thing about LeBron James when he played with the Miami Heat. I just didn't think every sportship was that good of a coach as what you see now. Um, I do believe that Daryl learned a lot from playing you two guys that duration he did because he definitely took that same rhythm to Fat Out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that speaks a real testimony into y'all leadership, man, you know, for real. And I'm just glad y'all said that, man, because um, we just going to give Lock his flowers right now, you know, because yeah. y'all his sure. guys, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like. Yeah. A lot of us never played for him, so we gonna feel how we feel. You know? But y'all played for him, you know, and, yeah. I, and not just y'all. Like rest in peace, Carthon. He he would always give Lock his flowers, you know. You know, this is the thing that get me. I ain't always agreed with everything Lock did. Right. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's like as a community, once the game is over and we take to Facebook or Instagram or whatever people are doing and calling somebody else out their name and bashing them over and over and over and people sharing it and making their mockery. 80% of them don't know the game and 100% of them can't do the job. Can't coach. Yeah. It's probably 1% that could probably actually coach the high school team yeah. right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. real talk. Like, with the knowledge of the game, the X and O's, the live, you know what I'm saying, the live you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Making adjustments like, they be on there like, you should do this, he should do that, bro. When you in that flame, bro, I, I bet you can't do it. Yeah. You mean, know what you I'm saying? Can't, you can't see everything from that sideline. You can't because I know I don't see everything from the fans. But you can't see everything when you playing. My wall was never really with lot. It was really with the referees. And even I look back then on that now, and I feel like I was a belligerent a lot of times. <laughs> you are. <laughs> You so, the but with in them championship runs, I'm finna segue this into the next subject. In, in them championship runs, man, that created so much notoriety, so much fame for you guys. Not only in just the state of Georgia, but just sprinkled across the nation. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about you because I didn't spend time with you in places. I would be with him, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So right on the cusp of y'all winning those championships, and right in the between them. Especially that last one. Especially that last one, right? So after that, the recruitment for you both sake was so extremely high. Your names was constantly in papers, an article here and there. Like that fame, like wherever y'all played, it was a packed arena, mm -hmm. gym, mm -hmm. wherever it was at, it was packed, you know? 
So you felt the pressure of that fame early. Just going out and having to just get into a random conversation you didn't want to get into. You just simply trying to go in the store. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because people love to see you and they're just trying to ask all the questions they think they want to ask you when they see you on TV or something like that. So how did it feel your first time stepping on the field in that crowd, your first time stepping in um, the arena in Georgia? How did it feel going over being UGA athletes already? well-known mega superstars in the state of Georgia. I want to hear Trey version. <laughs> For me, with the fans, you know, it's a good, it's a good bit in the stadium at Georgia Sample Stadium, hold up like 93,000, but good. for me, coming from the small town that I came from, Thompson, Georgia, Lock Town, I feel it wasn't it wasn't a bad transition for the simple fact of We've been packing out gyms in high school. It started, I want to say that started, what, 2017 when we had that whiteout and I lost see, the first see, round? Yeah, that was like 2016, though. 2016, 2017. Yeah. yeah, but like just going into college to transition, for me, it wasn't too bad for the simple fact of I just used it as fuel to, to help continue to drive me while I'm on the field. I'm a freshman coming on the field, running on kickoff. All I see when I look around the stadium, 93,000 people like, my adrenaline just started rushing from that, so I I say that definitely helped elevate my game. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, uh, it's a different experience because, like he said, you used to packing out of uh, gyms, arenas, whatever the case is. But like for me, uh, we don't hold what Sanford hold. Like <laughs> we hold, you know, I think UGA, you know, what I'm saying, Stedman holding like ten thousand five hundred, right. five twenty, five hundred twenty. You know, for me, my first game. I was mad nervous, bro. You know, I don't really get nervous. Right. So when I tell you I'm nervous, yeah. I was nervous. I, sh I remember just shooting my first shot. I made my first shot in my college career. I shot a corner three. I didn't even feel it. <laughs> I swear, I don't know if I was going to air ball. Hit, right? You know, when you a shooter, you can tell you finna make a miss. It. Man, thing went straight net. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I'm here now. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm here now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, yeah. like, I was nervous, bro. Like, yeah. real talk. All right, I'm going to name drop. I guess a couple of names. Um, of course, these are going to be names more known than the guys that, all the guys that you know. Okay. Nick Claston. Uh-huh. Anthony Edwards. For sure. Saville Wheeler. Uh-huh. Uh, talk about it, man. Talk about them and talk about the rest of your guys. You don't have to say their name. Just talk about that. When you say talk about them, you mean as in like what? What made them special? What made... The uh, the um, experience with UGA, special with them. Oh, uh, I'm gonna start with Nick. With Nick, uh, he was a sophomore, my freshman year. Mm -hmm. So coming in, you know, he was projected. Which at the time I didn't even know that. Yeah. I didn't even realize that he was projected to. We were so far into the season. Yeah. And coach was giving them hell after one game. Yeah. Because coach, you know what I'm saying? He had played bad after playing good. Yeah. Go like you up and down. And I can't trust it. He ain't good on the center G League you been. And I'm like, oh, shit, Nick Clack, hell. You know what I'm thinking to myself? I'm like, Nick Clack, fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, our personal relationship at that time was, I was the freshman, you know, and I don't know how it is in locker rooms now, but when I was a freshman, you still had to, you know what I'm saying, fend for yourself. You had to prove that, you, you know what I'm saying, you belong. Yeah. So, I spent a lot of days in the locker room getting my weight up, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> fighting the older seniors, losing, winning, doing whatever, you know what I'm saying, just, but Nick was one of the ones that Nick, I ain't never had to, you know what I'm saying, fight with Nick. Nick was kind of all like, man, y'all leave my friend alone, man. You know what, <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying, man? My boy good, man. Let my yeah. boy, you know what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. really just mad because you can't, you know what I'm saying, yeah. can't guard him, you know what I'm saying? There's a couple guards, I ain't going to say them now, they used to be tight. <laughs> they used to be tight. They my boy, but they were tight now. But uh, Si, uh, I was an older guy when Si came in. So, well, I was a sophomore. But when he came in, kind of, it was the same, you know. Getting on the ropes in the weight room, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get straight. He was already fast as hell. So I hit the flow literally. He hit the flow right. already taking off 100 mile ball. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, His IQ was shot. hot. With him, you know what I'm saying? It was kind of like refreshing when yeah. he first got there. Because it was like, anyway, you know what I'm saying? Somebody IQ just a good in mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, that was kind of the thing with him, man. Uh, who else you name? Ant. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Roommate. Lee right now. I'm going to put that out there. Yeah, we we kind of... <laughs> I can't necessarily say, okay, what do I'm going to say? For me, I was already a dog. Like, I was already working hard. Yeah. He showed me working hard at a different level. Right. So, 
I'm gonna throw him under the bus. You know, he ain't really had no classes, <laughs> nothing like that for real. You know, so I'm going. You know, so I'm working out seven o'clock in the morning. Cause I got an eight o'clock class. Yeah, I'm getting my shots up through the day before practice. I practice. Um, I'm in my mind. I'm like, I'm done. And like, no, that ain't enough. I'm like, bro, you ain't. He like, that's an excuse. So we in the gym 10, 11 p.m. at night. I'm like, bro, I gotta get up at seven o'clock again in the morning. You know what I'm saying? So he kind of just. The work got to be done on top of what I already knew. Right. And then my 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 help to him was he would lose mind a little bit. Like, of course, his his instincts and stuff for the game is as, like, superior. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, like, I had to get back. Cause I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? You, you take breaks here. You taking breaks there. You know what I'm saying? It got to the point where he was on that and then being punctual. He would tell anybody now. Like, if I call, he like, bro, this the dude got me punctual. But y'all wonder why I'm always on time. He like. This the dude. I like, did my room. I did my brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He got me punctured. So that kind of like, yeah. me and his roommate, growth I mean, because, or whatever you want to I mean, call because it. because you wasn't our originally roommates. Who? <clears throat> you and Anthony. He he required. We were. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, because I was supposed to have a guy named Christian Brown as my roommate. Yeah. Because I hosted him when he was coming in. Yeah, I remember CB. But you know, Ant had that different pool. He had that presidential <laughs> pool. Ant said, oh, no. Yeah. And my roommate. Yeah. So he ended up moving in with me. Yeah, that's how that worked. I don't know. I'm I'm not a, I'm not a big football fan. I'm gonna just go ahead and say this before you go into your guys. I'm not a big football fan. I only have players that keep me interested. So the only player that had me interested when I was young was Deion Sanders. Of course, he was the only thing that was interesting to me in terms of football. And then and a little bit of Emmitt Smith. And then I followed Edgeon James into the league. Vic. <clears throat> I like it, Vic. <laughs> Oh, he's for the lead. I mean, I like the lead big guy, though. But I like that Vic Vic went overload, though, on so many people. You get what I'm saying? Like, it was like a given. Like, I'm just naming people that just, you know, made me like football. Like, I was already on Edge and Jane while Vic was coming in. Like, these are the people that brought me in. Made me watch it. Like, I didn't even watch Elson Lee football until Alex Collier came along. Then I started paying Elson Lee some attention. Like, that's why I never played football. I didn't care about it. Like, my last... The last person I followed into the NFL was Cam Newton. <clears throat> that was yeah. So since then, I haven't really had a player up until you to just watch football. So I didn't watch a lot of the UGA football games until you got there. So I don't know the players like that. So Same. I don't know who to name. So I, I mean, if you want to name them, I got some. <laughs> but I got some. just talk about the experience, though. Oh. <laughs> oh, who, who you playing? Some names, you know what I'm saying? Some people that I just, you know what I'm saying, that I'm cool with. Like, You've been what, around some guys. What, yeah, you know what I'm saying? What it's like to be around, you know what I'm saying? I like, uh, I want you to talk about uh, JD. That's our boy. That's a okay. mutual friend. Brother. JD. Um, Z's. That was my dog. And uh, you play with, uh, you play with Rick Dean. Chicago. Steve. Tyreek, yeah. yeah. Tyreek Stevenson for the for Miami. Yeah. Yes, hey, let me hear about them three. What them boy like? <laughs> Started out. And with Tyree Steele, I speak on Tyree first. Tyree, he was one of them guys like he from Miami now, so you know <laughs> that way. Oh, I know. Get, you know what I'm saying? Them boys, they, they play ball. They like they that athletic, sand. but yeah. really they on. He wanted to be there, but he didn't. He knew like, man, if I'm, then I just ain't go play ball. But yeah. like, he got that Paul boy mentality. But got you. <laughs> being, being around him at practice, he was one of those guys that you really didn't have to say too much to him. He was out. He he go run his mouth. He gonna get at the receivers, whatever anybody. And he he'll be playing cornerback, stuff, mm-hmm. free safety, everything. He go get down and then he just gonna talk, he gonna let it be known. He go talk his shit. And other than that, man, like he was just one of the ones that you ain't want to mess with. <laughs> <laughs> he's going, like I keep going back. He from down in South Florida. Like, and he got that vibe yeah. though, Chris. He got yeah. that vibe off the court. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like his instincts and talent here though. He got yeah. gold teeth. He, he, got, he got some goals. Had him. He got some goals. Yeah. I believe he so, <laughs> he's, he's down see, south that's, west, so. Yeah, that's what they follow. They follow the down south Florida yeah. people. Yeah. They like that. But goal. him, he a dog, man. And no. Who else you? Who, who, who's uh, JD? Jordan Davis, man. I, I, Jordan Davis, bro. 
a lot of people they probably see this in like his interviews and stuff but he's one of those guys like he he's a out, very outgoing person very yeah. outspoken funny goofy and he's the biggest guy in the room so real goofy you going if he speak, you gonna hear him. Okay, so now I know who y'all told y'all I don't. Yeah, yeah I know who y'all talking about. Yeah, yeah. He's, the biggest, he's probably the biggest person in the world right now. <laughs> like literally. Dude, but, but he can he can move though. Yeah. He fucking move though. JD man, but like as far as him out the field, he's he's one of those guys that you want to surround yourself with. Cause he gonna look out for you in any aspect of life. A lot of people don't even know he's younger than me. And I was one of the youngest ones in the locker room. So with him being he the big, yeah, they did. Yeah, I didn't know he yeah, was that young though. Baby. A lot Good. of people don't know that. So like that kind of show you what his mindset is with things and how he act. But as far as that, like you get on that field, oh, he tapping to another. Come on, home. bro. He came to college before you though. He did. Cause me and him he reclassified. He had to. Cause me and bro were orientation group together. Uh, we were thriving thirteen. Y'all know that. Man. Uh, he was, I ain't gonna. Uh, hey, we ain't gonna talk about that. Uh, but yeah, I remember. Cause me and him was sitting there, I was you, he was right here. I'm like, but who this big goofy? I'm like, well, I know he can't play no ball. <laughs> they like, goofy. they like, yeah, he tough. <laughs> hey, months went by, credit man, body changed a little bit. I said, oh, yeah. Yeah, he After like, about a year, I said, oh, yeah. He, he ready to He definitely body changed the part for, for, Jordan, for JD. It's crazy. It, like, he came in as a freshman, I want to say all of 360. Just about 360. Big, 360. Made. Lazy, really didn't want to do too much. He gonna work now, nah, but no extra. He ain't, yeah, he ain't doing no extra. But you can just see that growth as he developed, grew into college, going to sophomore, junior season. Like, you can what just he is now? About three thirty, about three thirty. Right now, I really don't know. Sometimes he'll keep you a little iffy on it, but he probably around like three thirty. I know he look a whole different way yeah, that he came in. Because I was like, bro, ain't no way he five. Yeah, he, he was wild when he first came in. He wild, now bro. He now swim. he look like, hey. He, he, he won the one, though. <laughs> yeah. He won the one. And the man. other one I think was uh, Z. Z? Speaking of Z, I think he loves Z. <laughs> the one he got, he got a flat pop and chain. Okay. Nigeria. He's I don't want to get Nigeria. his culture wrong. Yeah, he, he Nigeria. Nigeria. He's something like that. I just love Z working out at the Pinnacle. He one of those one. He was my locker mate when I first got to college. I love that boy. That ever since, dog. ever since I first linked up with the Z, he started calling me his sack brother. Like we just started calling each other sack brother. Man. With him, he wasn't nobody go out work him. Uh, he one of them guys like the Wakanda power. I know you done heard the Wakanda pop. Like I, yeah. I real <laughs> deal think that's real. Real talk, bro. Hey, crib, bro, get a sack. Nigerian like that. He yeah. real deal <laughs> like that. Real. Get a sack, or you come on, you like that, dog. Different, bro. <laughs> different, but it's easy. He, he held me accountable on a lot of situations in college. Man. He took me under his wing because he was a sack leader of the team. So I followed in his footsteps mm -hmm. without him even really knowing it. Right. But, but them three, them, them three guys and, right there. And, and we're gonna get yeah. off them. But what's crazy about him is, bro, he had a brother at LSU. He yeah. cold. Yeah. DJ. He cold. <laughs> now, um, <clears throat> now y'all, y'all had some more classmates that wasn't athlete that also went to UGA. Mm -hmm. Like, how was that? Like, did it feel like y'all turned UGA into Upson Lee? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say turn it into Upson Lee, but. It was just seeing those people on the campus, it definitely, you know, like it's, from a small town, you can yeah. get out of that. Yeah. It's always refreshing to see them. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, we so stuck in the grind yeah. that you don't That's see them a lot. Mm -hmm. So when you do see them and you run into one on, oh, I got to chop it up. We got to yeah. catch up real quick. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And then you back on the go. Because that athlete grind, bro, it ain't no joke, dog. Like, yeah. it's, sun, it's sun up, sun yeah, down. Sure. When you finish your day, bro. You trying to wrap your mind around, but I need to recover a little bit before I do this again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you don't really have a lot of time to just kick it like that. Probably for them too, even though it's them not too. Athletic. I commend them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like Maybe we got a mutual friend. You know what I'm saying? I found them Jaquari. Yeah. I tell him all the time. I said, bro, ain't no way I could have did what you did. Bill yeah. Gates scholar, all yeah. the programs he was in. Yeah, he's like straight up thought all of his. He black though. excellence. He black excellence, dog. Yeah. Different <laughs> with it. Just ain't an athlete. That's an athlete. Yeah, mentally, mentally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mentally, yeah. yeah. Uh, what you guys like to do outside of professionalism? You know, when you're not in professional mode. Take off, Trey. <laughs> See me. Revert back to lock time. Like growing up, it when you got the woods. So I don't, I'm one of those guys. I like nature. Mm -hmm. I'll be quick to go out and just take a little hike somewhere, fishing, riding ATVs, things of that nature. But 
I'll speak on the nature part for the simple fact that we growing up and we us growing up uh-huh. a lot of time. Like that's how we. That air smell is different. Yeah, like we have to make up everything <laughs> we wanted to do. Anyway, that air smell is different. It does. You just you just come up with a different thought. Because it's, it's the trees. It's yeah. different though. Yeah, you just it come is. up with a different thought. It's I know different. for me. I know for me, um, being isolated. Because I feel like if I grew up in the city, I don't even know how I would have turned out. To be honest with you. But being isolated like that, I was able to just stay in my head a lot. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's too much sometimes. Mm-hmm. You kind of get kind of bother yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, talking to yourself a little too much. But you know, I look back on it now, man. I guess it ain't too much talking to yourself, is it? It's I, mean, good, bro. I mean, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Talking to yourself is a good thing to me. But to answer your question, though, I ain't gonna lie. I'm a nerd. I watch a lot of interviews. Like, I watch a lot of interviews, you know what I'm saying? Just listening to people's stories, they pals, mm-hmm. they journey. Because, like, for me, it's been hard as hell. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. So, like, just seeing it as possible with all the obstacles that I've seen people go through, that's probably harder than mine or different. You know what I'm saying? I'm still inspired. And I like to read books. I like to, you know what I'm saying? Like, he said, take walks, enjoy nature. Like, I ain't going to lie. I remember being in school. The little moments I could get to come home and just go to Los Angeles and just get Sunday dinner, Sunday dinner. like even if it, I was only home for a few hours and I'm back out, that refreshes you to deal with all the stuff that you deal with on a daily as an athlete. Right. So like, law of time itself and the nature of it was therapeutic for mm-hmm. me and always is still. Yeah, apparently you like to play Uno. I'm five. Five. Uno, no mercy, Uno. All wild card Uno. So you like Uno? I'm numero I'm Uno. Get, so let me ask. So is this is, is this a long time thing? thing? Is this a long time thing or is this a UGA yeah. thing? This Uno. Uh, nah. I, mean, you grow up I don't think. It, but. I don't think it's a location thing. Yeah, it's just, so you just, this is, y'all just like Uno. Five. This is a competitive. I don't thing. like Uno. Yeah, it could be space. It don't gotta be on no. I take spades serious, bro. I like spades. The way I, I compete like doing a basketball game, I'm so serious. But you throw <laughs> something down crazy, I'm calling you out. Bad move. <laughs> Two facts people don't know about you guys that you don't mind telling. <laughs> Let me have it. Yeah, I got to thank you a little bit. Yeah, me too. I ain't gonna lie. That's why I told him that. I said, I want too fast that I'm willing to give up like that. Like, that ain't, you know, that ain't. Hot seat right now. You know, I know what I wanted. I had to put I you on the hot seat. Right I had to. I had to, but I ain't gonna lie. Too fast that they just don't know about me. Uh, you like Taylor Swift music? Oh, that's a crazy one, but I ain't even gonna get it. <laughs> I do. I, I ain't no Swifty, though, so I, I ain't gonna do that because they gonna go crazy. But, uh. <laughs> Too fast about me, bro. It's tough, man. Cause like, you don't want to oh. drop too much. I don't want to drop too much, but then you know, so I don't want to get in. You like, man, we knew that. I got that, one. That we give me one. I got one. I mean, people might have an idea because I done mentioned it, but I'm not sure that people know that I'm really into like real estate, building houses. Like, I'm I'm just truly into that because I came up. Building houses with somebody you real close with, Mario Chroma. Okay. Like, we laying bricks. I'm, yeah. I'm all of 10, 12 years old. Uh, brick mason. Yeah. I'm telling you, growing I wouldn't have gave him that. Fact, that's see, something see, I like to do. That, that's tough. That's tough. I rock with that. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of brick masons walking down see. through there. I never did get a chance to do that. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean. Man, I knew, right? I'm trying. Yeah, that's something <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. They don't know you in your yeah, bag yeah, like that. Yeah. I know, though. I, I know like you in that like bag. But, um, right. It's hard for me, man. Like, just too fast, dog. All right. I'll say this. <sighs> this is crazy. Because I don't know if it's a fact or how you want to put it. But I'm going to just say this. At my younger age, like, I'm still young, but at my younger age, I feel like some of the stuff I've done would say otherwise, but real deal, I feel like a real fact about me is that, bro, I feel like I was built to be like a a real family man, like a real family man. Like, I'm talking about like- Married. Husband. Okay. Dog. What child. <laughs> Jumping the broom. You know what I'm saying? That type of stuff. On. Like, that, that's a that's a fact about me. Like, bro, that's what I'm really, uh, yeah. you know? That's, that's one for me. And then two. Hmm. Two. <laughs> He don't like ketchup or mustard. Bro, that's crazy, bro. That's another one. Bro. Never I had hate it. Ketchup, mustard. I hate a lot of. Took mustard one time. Eat, 
Only because he was catching a crime. Tell that story. <laughs> tell that story. That's a crazy story. Blizzard playing. <laughs> bro, bro, what's crazy? I'm not a glizzy eater. This the glizzy eater. This a glizzy champion right here. He put everything on my glizzy, bro. Bro, bro. Ask him why he don't eat hot dogs now. Coach Law. <laughs> Everything. Hey, chili beans. cheese. He got baked beans. Yes, sir. Hey, what, hey, this man, bro, we went to a game. I want to say we went to Pike County, man. Yeah. What was that Pike County game? Sorry. Who gave that man some sweaty hot dogs? Sorry. He still ate them, bro. Sorry, Pike County. Yeah. Y'all he still ate yeah. them. Yeah. He's a real glizzy. I'm not a glizzy. I ain't got nothing against glizzy now, bro. Bro, I hate ketchup, bro. <laughs> the way you eat a glizzy, I'm against. Way oh, you, you, with the, you against the bite? No, nah, he you against the fact that you don't do it. Yeah, he's saying that he don't like the fact that you eat yours dry. I'm not really eating them. I don't eat them like that. He's just saying he can't believe you don't like it. It's dry. Okay. It's okay. yeah, dry. One time. You ever been a kid, yeah, bro? You ever had people like put ketchup and mustard on your face while you sleep and stuff like that? Well, nah, I kill I I I like about that. Don't put no ketchup and mustard on my face, bro. I'm about to hey, pass out. Find out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to say it for you. Around to find out. I'm about to pass I out, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said it for him. I'm sorry, y'all. I said it for him. <laughs> Well, those were the facts I know that people don't know. He had mustard one time, and he only took it because he was catching a crimp. And he was playing against a team from overseas up in Swanee. And he was playing so good against them. It was just him and Cam Hogan. And everybody they was playing against was the, the elite of the basketball players Supposedly. in that gym. Supposedly. And he was out there having his 30. way with them. Yeah. He was catching a crimp. And they first told him to take pickle juice, but there was no pickle juice. Right. So somebody came up with an idea of mustard, and he was like, "Nah, I don't want no mustard." So he went back out there, caught scored like crown. six points, caught another crown. So they like, he was like, "Nah, nah, nah, go on, give me the mustard." Nah, nah, nah. That first of all, you gotta tell him it got so crazy. Then you come on the court. Well, you caught a crown the first time. Yeah, I was they, recording. I had they to stop coach recording. knew I was killing them. They coach was like. He don't need to play no more. Yeah. Hey, Charlotte, that ain't your decision. Yeah. If I catch yeah, another crown, that ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah. Yeah. Man, man brought me the buster on a neck and tray. <laughs> I had to really stare at it before I did it. <laughs> bro, I licked it, bro. And just, <laughs> my body just cringed. I said, yeah, coach, it's over. It was a lot of things, Charlotte. Yeah, what that muscle do to you, though. <laughs> For real. Because it got like that pickle. You know how that pickle go give you that love. I had never punch. had it, bro. Yeah, I was saying I was saying I didn't like mustard, just off the look of it. I had never had it to that day. Yeah. So you was off for it just off the look. Off the look, like I, I I was just proud of him for even trying the mustard. That let me know how bad he wanted to play. Yeah. Yeah. But I also learned how much he hated the mustard because he elected to not play no more. I he was just yeah. like I just can't play no more, coach. If I got hey, shout out to Coach Derry too, man. Y'all Coach Derry, y'all winning. We was when I came out. Yeah. When I caught the crap, we were winning. So we started put that loss on you. It's on me. We're going to talk about that off the camera. It's on me. It's on me. So. Oh, man. What inspires you to do the numerous charities and events that you do? Like right now, like between the both of you. Like what I'm going to let him go first because I'm going to get into mine later. I'm going to let him go. Number one, family. And just a few, like seeing my younger cousins. When I say my family, it all starts with my family. Seeing my younger cousins. And then revert to just the younger generation, the younger kids growing up in my community. I know what we lack growing up in our community mm. as a kid. Mm -hmm. So I know what I want to be able to pour back and give to the community. Because it was guys that, you know what I'm saying, like guys like Farike, when me growing up, he was a football guy, went to Auburn, that came back a little bit. But it wasn't too many people that just came back and really tried to yeah. Build the community, other than by just you know word word of mouth to kids and stuff like that. But uh, me personally, I want to actually you know what I'm saying, do venues and just charity events, things to give back to the community. And then for me, uh, I just remember when we came through, there was nobody that was like a him or somebody. You know what I'm saying? To say, hey, here's such and such. You know what I'm saying? X amount of dollars. Y'all do what y'all want. You know what I'm saying? In the sports and Whatever y'all want to do with the money, you know what I'm saying? Just give it to you like that. So we had to do stuff like donut fundraisers, you know what I'm saying? Fish fries, all Watch that stuff. Cars. Watch car, all that stuff coming up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not against that. Nothing. That's part of the hustle. That's mm -hmm. part of the grind. That makes you appreciate actually being on the team. Yeah. That meant something, like, to still do that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, like, for me, it's just 
Well, I'm gonna say I'm gonna shout out uh, Marcus Cherry. Marcus Cherry did do us an alumni tournament. He did do us an alumni tournament, and it raised a good amount of money. But then they didn't think it was gonna really raise no money like that for real. And then they made us disperse it between a lot of sports, so we didn't really eat off of it like right. we should have. Right. So I say all that to say, um, I'm getting ready for another event. I'm hosting an alumni game uh, May 19th. That's a Sunday. It's gonna be from three to three p.m. to seven p.m. Uh, we got I want food truck sponsors. You know, so I haven't started that up yet. Up yet, but I'm getting into that. Uh, I got other sponsors. You know, what I'm saying missions. You know, what I'm saying a number of things that's going into it that's gonna make it special. And I'm really just, you know what I'm saying, in this event itself, I'm calling on the city to make this special. You know what I'm saying? Us come together as a whole, you know what I'm saying, for these kids. And for those who don't know, uh, the money will be all going to the basketball program completely. You know what I'm saying? That was a non-negotiable for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect to any other sport, you know what I'm saying? But I played basketball, you know what I'm saying? I want these kids to particularly benefit from this event. You You got them records. Got them records over there. Them records there for sure. <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's going to be big. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be an alumni game. We're going to have a women's game and a men's game. Then we're going to say we're going to give away some gift cards and different stuff throughout. There's going to be some number of things going on. But I need, uh, I want to say this now, you know what I'm saying? I haven't put it out yet, but I want 12 women, you know what I'm saying, for each team. So that's 24 women, alumni, alumni only. And the same for me, I want 12 men. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's 24 men, you know what I'm saying? And I got guest surprises, you know what I'm saying? Pro athletes, uh, D1 players, you know what I'm saying, coming in. That's going to make up the rest of the 15, you know what I'm saying, right. on, on each side. You know, so yeah. that's, what's, that's what's going on. Yeah. Before you go on that, I just want to give you your flower, bro, like uh, with a foundation, foundational stuff, pieces like that, people really don't do until after their career over. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Even, even though you in between, you know what I'm saying, you handling your situation, I just want to give you your flowers. Like, hey, Appreciate bro. it, brother. Like, that ain't, that's, that's not something easy to do because a lot of that, you're not even looking for a profit. Like, you just trying one. to give Don't back. Want. You know what I'm saying? you trying to give back to the community, yeah. like you're saying. Yeah, man. That's, what it's, about, man. Do, that's and, what it's about, man. That's what it's about. And I'm going to go ahead and give you your flowers Appreciate because it. I'm going to tell you. So. After you guys like literally wiped the floor with everybody you saw in basketball, <laughs> right? <clears throat> From that point on, the kids, like even TJ, Sirs. yeah, even TJ, so. was not interested in football no more. All the kids was all talking about basketball, right? Because that was the last thing in their mind until you had that event at the field. Camp. The camp. Bro, when is that this year? Since then. I want to say May May fifteenth. I want to say I'm not exactly sure. I begin my months mixed up, but it's on the fifteenth. June June fifteenth. I seen you posted it. June fifteenth. June. Yeah. Well, since then I'm in there this time. And since I'm playing then, football. Sorry. I haven't heard nobody <laughs> talking about no basketball. I only I go to the Civic Center now every day. It's just a handful of basketball players in there. Right about that. And and since that camp you had, man, these kids is emphatic. To play football, I mean, you check the books. You look at uh, 8U, what they did the last two years. You look Mm -hmm. at 9U, what they did the last two years. Mm -hmm. You look at 10U, what they did the last two years. Look at the middle school, what they done. The high school is starting to create Mm -hmm. that vibe again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I ain't going to sit here and say that that camp soulfully is the reason. But I do know it created the, the I want to play football again and these kids hard. It plays you know a role. What I'm Do you know how like crazy that is, how special it is for them to see him growing up on a daily, but yeah. now that he's you know what I'm saying, he's gone, he's handling his business, his access a little lower. When he come back for them to be able to say, I can touch him, like yeah. that's Trayvon. Oh my yeah. God, that's Trayvon. Yeah. Man, you know that at night that fire, you know what I'm saying, for yeah. them to play football, you know what I'm saying? Like that's that different. Like he wanna us. Yeah. He went number one? Yeah. Shot crazy. <laughs> Shot different. Yeah, it was a lot of doubters. Local and nationwide. Man. Door always be though. Yeah. Man. <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna you lie. Know, I ain't gonna lie. Right. When he went number one, bro, a small piece of me said, dang, I should have kept playing football. <laughs> <laughs> did you, hey, did you, did you, did you, did you know that? Money. Like, did you know that? And hey, how many picks in y'all draw? Uh, so, out of the whole draw? Whole draw, like 280? It's something like that, seven rounds. Well, I'm like thinking to myself, yeah. But like yeah. leading up to that, I knew I had an idea that I was gonna go 
real high like a money before the drop, but I didn't know exactly I was going number one yeah. until the day before the drop. Yeah. When the GM them had caught me. But just just speak on that process right there. A lot of people don't you know as athletes we go through things too like yeah. mentally. Yeah. Like in that process that's a long process. Yeah. And I wouldn't really wish on anybody for the simple fact that it showed me a lot from the game of football and how I need to you know what I'm saying? take care of my mental just because I'm seeing things on the media from I go second round to, you know, I could potentially go late first round, early first round, but once I like once I got that card, I was going number one, like that was just a yeah. major sigh of relief, man. Yeah. Before man. that, I'm telling you, I'm putting in hours in the gym, like it was time where I'm out training in Texas, I could fly on the top thirty visit or something to a to a team that they had to come out. I'm right back in the gym right after that. It's just a lot going on, but yeah. I didn't even I didn't think I was going I'm, number one. Yeah. I'm gonna say something too on that. You know what I'm saying? As to him going number one. Uh I kinda you know what I'm saying, I'm at Ole Miss now. I'm watching him. That's the only thing I'm watching. I ain't even watching Ole Miss football. <laughs> I'm watching him, yeah. You know what I'm saying? In yeah. the others with some of the other yeah. boy, but I'm watching him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So every time I would see a jump, telling me if I'm lying. Do I not call you or send you a Snapchat or something? Say, hey, he on ESPN at 30. <laughs> send it again. He on ESPN at like 15, 17. I'm like, yeah. then he got down to like five. Yeah. I called that man. <laughs> I want to say, I want to say this is no lie. I want to say he was jury shopping. Yeah. I want to say that you had Jay got your watch. You saw him in your watch. He don't, you know what I'm saying? He don't do it. I said, bro, they got you top five. He said, y'all, I'm number one. <laughs> that's what he told me. He said, no, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm in, the, uh, I'm in the, uh, the training room doing some recovery. I thought I don't work that. The, the ESPN thing got him at like four, five. I wish I still had my Snapchat. I ain't got it no more, but I recorded it. So when I called him, he like, I'm number one. Yeah. I'm thinking he just, you know what I'm saying, just rapping with me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that man went number one, bro. <laughs> hey, bro, I'm in the house. I'm tripping. Yeah, you know, folk went. You know, folk instantly went to calling me. Yeah. Why y'all calling me? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I couldn't do that, man. The I, very I saw moment, praises, dog. The very moment they projected you in the top five, <clears throat> Mike, <clears throat> Mike said it. He's like, oh, he's going number one. It was I crazy. I said, Mike, Mike, you think that? And he's like, he's going number one. And I don't know what it is about Mike and his prophecy on the, over the NFL. But he's prophesied the last six Super Bowl winners at the beginning of the with season. Him. I gotta get in yeah, with him. Gotta get in with him. He'll, he'll tell everybody at the beginning of the season who's gonna win the, the Super Bowl, and that's who wound up winning. And he said, when they first project you at number five, he's like, oh, he's going number one. With so much confidence. Appreciate you, Mike. <laughs> that, was, that was crazy, bro. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just speak on a little something. He ain't gotta speak on it, but. I respected the way he handled it. You know what I'm saying? Sure. With just, I got family around. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't. Even, I went there, so I don't know if he just booked a hotel room or something. He had a oh, hotel sweet. room, a suite. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just had your family around. Cause I felt like, you know what I'm saying? He didn't get the love that he deserved, bro. Yeah. And that's all cool. You know what I'm saying? We we from a small, we from a small. We used to that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like we were the best basketball team in the state, and they yeah. looking at us like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? That wasn't that. I knew that wasn't that to him, and he just shrugged it off. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just shrugged it off. Like, that, like you say, like I wasn't never into the sport or the game of football for the publicity. Like I play the game of football because I, I genuinely love sport. Real. Like yeah. that's why I wanted to be. I wanted the people to be around me that was genuinely happy for me, which I knew with my family. Yeah. Like even yeah. though we might disagree about something, but they, I know they genuinely got my back. They want to see you win. All these other fake people, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like yeah. you get that's a whole another world when you go yeah. that number one pick. You go to New York. Y'all was in New York too. On, uh, I want to say that was in. Uh, I know the NBA in New York. It was in Vegas. Oh, so just think about it. Vegas. That's a crazy place. Like there's a lot of stuff that go on. You got the Diddy situation. Like I don't want to get mixed up in nothing dealing with that. That's why I, me personally, that's why I don't like the line. Like I'm not into a all that. I just do what I do because I genuinely love what I do. Yeah. I'm trying yeah, to avoid but you any, gotta accept any it other stuff. I mean, yeah, it's a, like, because Steph got to accept it. But. I'm going to speak on this. I ran from it for so long, and I ain't in the line like that you in, but I ran from being Ty Fagan for so long. Like, people around me, man, what's up, superstar? Man, I ain't no superstar. This is that third. You know what I'm saying? It's like, 
we block our blessings when we do it. Like my mama used to, my mama stay on me about that, you know what I'm saying, today. And I say the same thing you say, like, man, on my own, I want the publicity. I want to take care of my family. I want to do what I love. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm focused on. But all that other stuff comes with it. So I do but want it, to say, it comes with it cause, to an extent, I want you to say, you know what I'm saying? It comes with it cause you got to accept it because that's going to make you bigger. Grow your legacy, you know even what I'm saying? When, even when y'all guys had to hiccup with the basketball team, a couple of guys weren't able to attend the championship game. And when the reports came out in the paper, although the reports it was about them, it was your photo yeah. that they put in there. Yeah. <laughs> you see That's what I'm saying? So we was getting all these calls like, "What's going on with Ty?" Like, "Ain't going on with Ty." Like, but the Great article night, was about the team. Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, May nineteenth is Trey Fawn Walker's day. Man, yeah. you. Yeah. That one that you know. Sometimes, like th- even this year. My sister had to remind me that I had my own day. I mean, yeah. I knew I had my own day in my city. It was just yeah. what it's at. They were like, "Is this the first one?" Uh, so I mean, this will make the second I mean, year they I mean, started. Is, it. is it a so last year when you did the parade that was May nineteenth too? Yeah. Or, I mean, is that a humbling, proud moment, or is that like a burden that you kind of I mean, really? That's just me personally. The way I handle things, that's just something that I really don't even know how to explain for real. I don't know how to. I know how to accept it, but I don't know how to. Because it's something that comes, but you never thought about it. Yeah, like, like I never all the I process that you day. go on, you never think. Oh, so, they so give me I guess it's day. safe to say that you feel like you haven't earned it yet. No, uh-huh. I wouldn't say that I haven't earned it. Thomas, I, <laughs> I, 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 I definitely earned it. For sure. <laughs> okay. It's like this, correct? And I ain't even this got no day. It, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, bro. It's like you grind through all the stuff that we just said that we want to do, not the line. Like, right. That's that's almost right there. It's like. Somewhat of a lime, like they that that's so, an achievement that you didn't even have in your list of like, goals. So, so like, they say we're gonna say, Hey, we want to give you a Trayvon Walker day. Like, damn, I mean that to them, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, it just like so it's, sort of, it's sort of like all of the two boxes of trophies that you don't care about. That I'm the only one that cares about and want to keep up with. Yeah. Like, you talking about like all the times y'all won a championship game and you kind of found your way in the back of the picture. Like on the top of your forehead is showing everybody else is in front of you smiling with big smiles and they're like, "We're tired on the pitch." You talking about like that? I ain't never care. I ain't never care about the line. Like, <laughs> that's definitely how it is. He was the same way though. <laughs> he just so tall. Yeah. You still can see him. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he definitely trying to get to the back yeah. though. Yeah. That was something I never even expected. Though. So like <laughs> when they when they told my hat on, they that was just I looked at it as another blessing and like you say that that just go to show with like yeah. my foundational stuff. I'm yeah. doing stuff for the community to show that yeah. people genuinely look up to me. Yeah. So I did take well, a with it. Well, for, you... for, for like 300 years, or however long Thomaston has been a place. Sure, definitely look up. The long only long. way people in the state of Georgia or anywhere in the world knew Thomaston, they were incorporated to the Emancipation Weekend. Not no more. See, they celebrated, really. Not no more. I want to go, go, go back to it, though. <laughs> How do you embrace that? Because me, personally, you know, it's I like... come with time, bro. To be honest, like, we so, still I'm saying, but when you wake up for it, day of, and you know you finna be here, you ain't turned up? I'm I'm turned up for you. You ain't turned up? I mean, I'm, I'm turned up, but at okay. the end of the day, I'm still, like, I'm still, I'm going into my season at this time, yeah. so I'm still training, like, my mind, yeah. like, I'm not even thinking about yeah. that. But you know, just sure. like you asking him, like, you yeah, you know how you, you you know day. how you would feel if, if it was coming up, yeah. and you just got all these things going, you would be happy, but you'd be happy, you'd be so compelled with everything so else, like, you don't, you wouldn't be able to, to compartmentalize it as something to be turned up for. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. Like that's what Until too, you though. get there, after the fact, like I really don't be able to take in any type of any type of celebration for me or a team that like, I'm not able to take that in until I'm looking back on photos. That's how I feel with charity. Like when, like with this event coming up, until I hand them that check and it's all said and done and Locke got that check and it's in the basketball account or however they run it, then I can like. Phew. Okay, that was something special. That was good. But yeah, right now, while I'm getting all of it together, I'm so in the thick of it. It's like, yeah. got so much going I on. I can't yeah. even really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I get you. I feel you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask y'all this, and we're going to close this out, man. So, what is the goal for the upcoming seasons, and what to expect? Say so for me, my goal this year, 
I'm in a position where I'm going into my third season. So obviously, I had a came, coming off a good season last year, ten sack season. But my main goal this year is just to exceed everything that I did last year. I really don't like setting goals for myself. Yeah. For the simple fact of. You know what I'm saying? If you set a goal, yeah. not to say that you just limiting yourself to that goal that you yeah. can't surpass it, but that's why I don't set a goal because I yeah. know I can surpass whatever I set my mind right. to. So I had 10 sacks last season. I definitely said I want 16 to 17 plus <sighs> this year. I know that's a lot. I know y'all gonna hold me to that too. So <laughs> I, mean, I ain't gonna start working for real. I mean, but, I mean, but you know, you're not really doing your job if you come back the same as last year. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, for me, I, don't, I ain't, ain't going to lie. I ain't never had a numbers goal. I'm a winner, you know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. like, for me, it's getting back into the process of things. I'm straight up trying to kick the door down. Mm-hmm. Like, let me in here. Yeah. You going to let me in back and kick it down. So, that's, yeah. for me, like, that's whatever numbers come with kicking that door down. Yeah. <clears throat> that's with, you know what I'm saying, any kind of positive you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So would you say result that follow that? Like whatever that case is, you know what I'm saying? But I'm getting back into it to get my dog back. Like right. just straight up dog. Like yeah. I'm yeah. I'm better than you. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Like <clears throat> I'm only being humble to God. I ain't being humble to y'all no more. Yeah. Like that's what, that what it is to me now. It's, yeah. it belts the ass for real. <laughs> straight up. Straight so up. So you saying you the winner. So basically what you're saying is you wanna kick the dough down saying that my usage rating on the team equates to a win yes, or, Lord. Winning, or winning situation. Yes, Lord. My, right. my defense, yeah, my IQ. Come out of extra accolades. Yeah, with all yeah. that. The, the, it, the yeah, accolades, yeah. the money, yeah. the promotion as far as teams, you know what I'm saying, whatever the case is. like per, uh, Merch. Merch. Yeah. Yeah. Like, whatever, man. Like, I don't Amen. know what God got for me, man, but I want it. What he got for me, I want it, dog. Hey, man, I can't believe you guys carved out some time and come onto my platform and speak your, your truths about your idealisms, about your life, your past. I'm so humbly uh, happy to close this out, man. I mean, whatever you want to say to the young guys before we close this out, tell them something. You and me, Trey. Mine will be short and sweet. First, I'd like to appreciate you for you know, allowing me to come on your platform. Like, this is your platform, and I think you should continue to, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Build out for it and stay on it. But uh, to all the kids out at Thomaston, anyway, man, just stay at it. We dropped, we dropped a lot of gems just throughout this, this time that we've been, short amount of time that we've been talking about. I feel like it's a lot of gems in here that you can take away. Not even, even if you don't play sports, you can take away something mm-hmm. that was said. You know what I'm saying? Just continue to be you and. Try to be better at whatever you're doing now. And I just want to add to that. Um, I want to say, you know, believe. And I mean really believe. Like, when I look back, man, some of the stuff that I allowed to happen as far as confidence drop, like, that's something that we go through as athletes, your confidence drop in certain places. And that, that come as, like, a, you know what I'm saying, a small lack of belief. When you fully believe, you have, like, that Kobe mentality. Mm-hmm. Shoot, that Kanye, like, can't nobody tell Ye nothing by Ye, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I just say fully believe, you know what I'm saying, no matter what your path is, because you're going to have obstacles, you know what I'm saying? Even if it's, a, you know what I'm saying, a path like his, you know what I'm saying? He believed, you know what I'm saying? If you want to be that, believe the way he believed. And for me, it's like, you believe in me, you know what I'm saying? I'm still fighting, I'm going to go get what's mine, you know what I'm saying? And prove, you know what I'm saying, I am, you know what I'm saying, what I am, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. Yeah. So just just believe, man. Like that's really what it is. Believe and have faith, and keep God first, for sure, for sure. I like that. Let's make obstacles the new op. Yeah. <clears throat> I like, I like that, bro. That's tough, bro. Yeah, like that's this. tough, let's right make, there, bro. Let's make obstacles the new the new op because the ops y'all think y'all op ain't the ops. Let them folk live, man. Let them folk live, cause we. Re- I really could have came on here and cat we in them up. But <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I could. We really could have real talk cat we in them. What you gonna, what you gonna say? But, see what I'm saying? But I ain't gonna do that. What you gonna? Yeah. Trey, what they, man, yeah, we you could rap us up. Man. <laughs> we we out here promoting positive stuff, man. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. Jump right on faith, though. That's how you gotta do. Hey, man, check these guys out, man. He's gonna, Trey Vaughn's gonna be blazing the trail for the next. I don't know how many years in his career. Stay days. tuned for yes, Young Fagan. He's going to be blazing the trail. Appreciate y'all stopping through, watching the podcast. We out.
www.drcrazy.com.